Hello and welcome to Lunchtime Politics on Channel's television. I'm Millicent Wonoka. On the news this hour, the trial of the Chief Justice of Nigeria suspended. Walter Noge resumes at the Code of Conduct Tribunal today. And the fever ahead of the supplementary elections in several states as INEC clears the air over Bochi supplementary elections. Controversy over declaration of Governor Rosa Dakota as winner of the Mo West senatorial election and the aftermath generates legal interpretation. We begin with the trial of the suspended Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Noge, that has commenced at the Code of Conduct Tribunal, where the trial was adjourned last week to enable the Chief Justice, who fell ill, to recuperate. Now, the CGN is in court, and we hear prosecution has called its first witness, Mr. James Opala. He is an officer with the Code of Conduct Bureau, a senior investigations officer. And when the witness was asked if he remembers the 10th day of January 2019, he answered in the affirmative and told the tribunal that he was directed by his superior to carry out an investigation. He adds that he was giving a petition to carry out now that investigation, saying that uh, the petition was received from one Dennis Aganya, alleging breach of code of public office, including non-declaration of assets and false declaration of assets against the Chief Justice. The trial is continuing at the tribunal. But let's get uh, more from our correspondent, Amaka Okafo, who is covering the trial for us. Amaka, what can you tell us about the proceedings there? Okay. All right. At the, thank you, Millicent. We are at the Code of Conduct Tribunal, and at the moment, the first prosecution witness is testifying against the suspended CJN, um, Justice Walter Onogen, he's in the dock. Um, remember last week, um, this trial could not commence, as the trial proper could not commence. He sent a letter to the tribunal saying he was um, ill. But today he's in the tribunal, he's in the dock, and the witness, an investigative officer with the Code of Conduct Bureau, is telling the tribunal um, how he commenced an investigation into the non-declaration of assets and false declaration of asset allegations against Justice Onogen. So far, he's told the tribunal that a, a petition was written against the, um, the suspended CJN, and he approached the uh, suspended CJN in his office to get his statement. He also got the statements of the petitioner and also got some documents belonging to the CJN from his bankers. That's all I can tell you for now. I'd like to thank you, Amaka Okafor. We know that you have to go back in. Uh, we'll get more story on that development, Code of Conduct Tribunal uh, taking place in Abuja. Well, to other stories, now Saturday, the 23rd of March 2019, the Independent National Electoral Commission will conduct supplementary elections in several states. And our next director of voter education and publicity, Mr. Luo Leo Sazuzi, has clarified issues surrounding the state of the governorship election results in Bochi and River States. He makes it clear that the commission will resume collation of results in Bochi by appointing a new returning officer while in River State collation of results would be concluded. He spoke about this on our political program, Sunday Politics. As for Bauchi, I think as we released two statements on Friday, one dealt with River State, the suspension of the elections in Rivers, and Rivers does, as of now does not have um, a supplementary election. We're just going to conclude the process of collation. But we do have uh, supplementary elections in several other states. Initially, we had penciled Bauchi down as one of the states for which there will be supplementary election. But as I speak now, quite honestly, we are not sure of that. The coalition officer um, could not continue uh, with her role because of the threats to her life and that of her family. And she was very worried about that. So a new coalition officer will be appointed. And on Tuesday, 
We'll go back and, con and, and then correct the uh, error. The error has already been collected, corrected because in one of the things, the council votes were said to be 23,200 and something. But looking through the documents of the investigative committee that when they've now found that, look, there was an error, patent error in the, in the, in the, in the addition. So instead of 23, there are now 2,300 and something council votes in that uh, area. They will conclude the coalition for uh, regenerate and conclude regenerate, uh, the, the coalition for Tafawa uh, Balewa. Uh, and then if there is sufficient votes and, legal, and the, any candidate satisfies legal requirements, then a return will be made. But if it's found out that there's not sufficient votes and there's need for a supplementary election because the margin of lead between the uh, leading candidates and uh, the total number of is such that it will not be up to the total number of regular voters, then there will be a supplementary election in those places where the elections were postponed or cancelled for overvoting. Joanna has given its position, but the All Progressives Congress in Bochi State is unhappy. It's kicked against the decision of the Independent National Electoral Commission to resume collation of governorship election results from Tafar Balewa local government area. Rejecting the verdict, the state's APC chairman, Ubanana, has dismissed the fact-finding committee's report, saying that INEC's position has uh, no legal backing. al Nana also questioned the composition of the committee sent to investigate the circumstances that led to the cancellation of results from that local government area. INEC is not empowered. It has no any legal backing to make a U-turn, to revisit any issue. After such a declaration, it can only be so done by a court of law. Anybody that is not satisfied with any part of the declaration or its totality, its totality so should only challenge that in a court of law. So as a layman, I don't know any legal ground based on which INEC is revisiting that issue. And that is why APC Bautista chapter is challenging the Independent National Electoral Commission for its action of revisiting that issue, which it has no powers to do so, because we don't know the legal backing that gives or empowers INEC to revisit that issue. And secondly, if you look at the composition of the committee, it's having a big, very, very big question mark. The committee is questionable. So on that ground, there will never be justice. Well, from Bochi, we move to another state where supplementary elections are also to be held at Damawa State. The People's Democratic Party in the state, they're alleging foul play over INEC's creation of an additional two polling units ahead of the supplementary election in the state. At a press conference at the PDP Secretariat in Yola, the Damawa State Capital, the chairman of the party, Tahir Shehu, says they will resist any attempt to manipulate the supplementary election slated for the 23rd of March. The Independent National Electoral Commission is assuring Platu residents of a free, fair and credible exercise for the Governorship and House of Assembly supplementary election schedule for Saturday, the 23rd of March, in nine local government areas of the state. The resident electoral commissioner in the state, Halilu Pai, during a stakeholders forum in Jos, reaffirmed the commission's commitment to providing a level playing field for all political parties while soliciting for fair play and decorum from the political parties towards a successful election. The stage appears set as the Independent National Electoral Commission prepares to hold supplementary elections in Plateau State on the 23rd of March 2019. It is for this reason that officials of the commission met with political party leaders and electoral officers to synergize towards successful polls. Continue, uh, Setting the tone for the interactive the, session, the resident electoral commissioner solicits the cooperation of political parties for the supplementary election. It's important we have an interface between us, the commission, and the political gladiators to synergize and found a common ground that come 23rd, we are going to really have an excellent outing. The two major parties going into the contest express optimism and pledge to cooperate 
with the election management body towards successful polls. Very prepared, very, very prepared for this election. Uh, we believe and we trust in God that we will win the supplementary election. Knowing all that, has, uh, all that has happened, we know what has happened. We have also taken all our corrections and we believe that we will win this election. We have set up various committees to address the various areas where the run will take place. And uh, they are doing their jobs. They have been giving their supplementary reports and we are very comfortable that uh, APC will win in all the areas that uh, we are going for Erora. Nine local government areas comprising Barkinladi, Basa, Bokos, Just North, Kanam, Langtang South, Mangu, Pangshin, and Shendam were affected during the governorship election, leading to cancellation of 48,828 votes across 41 polling units and 20 registration areas. Let's now take you back to Adamawa State, where the People's Democratic Party, even though they are alleging foul play over INEX creation of two additional polling units ahead of the supplementary elections, they're also holding prayer sessions for the peaceful conduct of the poll. Members of the People's Democratic Party and supporters arrived the party secretariat in Yula, Yadamawa State Capital. They are here to hold prayers for the upcoming supplementary election slated for March 23rd. While members of the Christian faith hold prayers in the conference hall of the secretariat, the Muslim counterparts take prayer positions in the premises. Both groups are asking God to intervene in the political impasse of the state following INEX declaration of the governorship election as inconclusive. Speaking to journalists shortly after the prayer sessions, representatives of both religions appealed to security agencies to ensure a peaceful supplementary election. So I pray that all of us should be peaceful in what we are going to do. With no fighting, no violence, let's go and vote. We need free and fair election. That will we start for that in a special al kunutu prayer. That's my prayer to the PDP. The chairman of the party, however, faults INEX alleged creation of an additional two polling units ahead of the supplementary election in the state. It is a well-known fact to all and sundry that on 11th day of March 2019, when INEC declared the result as inconclusive, a total number of they gave the total number of the polling units as 44, with a total number of votes cancelled as 40,988. They responded to our request for the details of the PU's cancel. They gave us 46 PU's in writing, adding two as against the 44 they earlier announced. Yet, the total number of registered votes in the 46 stood at 34,101 votes. Therefore, at the time of the rerun, we expect INES to issue 34,101 ballot papers, but no more, notwithstanding the fact that two additional polling units is added against the one they announced. The chairman appeals to INEC to ensure that a supplementary election is free, fair and devoid of rancor. Well, still to come on the program, we get an expert view on the supplementary elections and some of the issues raised. Plus, the former governor of Ogun State, Benga Daniel, may be on his way to the All Progressives Congress. Find out about that when we return.